Well, it's one thing to cut back on how much you eat if you're watching your waistline, but what if you couldn't afford the cost of food? According to some experts, that could soon be a reality for more and more people across the globe. A decade of high food prices. That was the warning from the United Nations as well as the OECD last week. Now, prices could soar by as much as 30 percent, and not to mention that's already on top of a, a 40 percent spike in global prices over the past year. Now, with figures like that, it's no surprise that food security is at the top of the G20 agenda. Agriculture ministers are meeting in Paris right now to figure out just how to tackle the price hikes. The solutions, of course, demand an understanding of the problem. And unfortunately, it's unclear whether global officials fully get what's behind the spike in food costs. Of course, our next guest might have a clue. His name is Daniel, Daniel Dicker, and he's a senior contributor of TheStreet.com. He's also the author of this book here, The Oil's Endless Bid, Taming the Unreliable Price of Oil to Secure Our Economy. Daniel, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us. Now, when you look at the problem of hunger and food inflation, uh, in your view, is this a production problem? We're, we're not making enough of the stuff? Or a political problem? Well, it's partially a production problem, Lucy, but what is not really well understood is that it's also become a financial problem in that hard assets, grains and so forth, it's been most seen with oil, have become tools for speculators, tools for investment of uh, many different classes of investors to get involved in. And that, besides making the price go up over the course of a very short period of time, has added to a lot of the volatility that we've seen in prices. You mentioned the 40 percent of uh, grain prices that we've seen, and we've also seen, obviously, how destabilizing this kind of volatility can be in terms of what we've seen in unrest in the Middle East and North Africa. So this is a problem that the G20 in Paris is going to try to get a handle on, although it's just the agricultural ministers that are meeting and not really the financial ministers, which are the ones who have any power whatsoever to try and tackle this speculative deep problem. So why is it then, uh, Daniel, that in so many discussions about the food uh, price issue, we, we see folks emphasizing uh, you know, weather events and production and failed uh, agriculture cultural policies, you don't really see anyone talking about the commodity, the commoditization and the financialization of food and the speculation that's involved here. Uh, explain that, and if you can just do that in a really simple way so our viewers who aren't uh, financial experts could really understand how this works. Right, and, and two reasons that happens is one, obviously there is a, a theater game going on on Wall Street trying to dissuade people. Now remember that there have been all sorts of uh, geological and uh, environmental issues. We've had, um, this year we've had droughts in Russia, we've had flooding in Australia and other things. But these things have happened through time. It's been sort of a way to uh, alibi what's been going on in food prices, particularly to people not here in the United States who don't spend a significant portion of their incomes on food, but particularly in those countries that we've seen have had such unrest where 50, 60, sometimes 80 percent of the money that they have goes into just basic foodstuffs. So there has been a, a, a need for a sort of a, a, a disconnect from what has been going on in the financial markets, particularly over the last five years, the up and down spiking we've seen in corn and wheat prices we saw it in 08 and we're seeing it again this year, and what is actually going on, what people can grab and understand, which is maybe a flood or uh, some sort of other uh, uh, drought problem, but it's really not much of a, uh, of a production issue. It's much more of a financial one. And talk about the role of oil in, in food price uncertainty, because after all, uh, when oil, uh, price, cost of oil goes up, uh, that's what helps us manufacture, that's what helps us refrigerate, process food. Uh, it's all really intertwined. Uh, explain that for us. Indeed, it, it is the most important input cost to food, uh, not only for the farming, but as you say, for processing. Um, literally, and, and in the financial markets, nothing is more important uh, than energy costs uh, in terms of uh, corporate growth and, and profitability. So this is the, the most important single uh, input cost that anyone needs to look at when they're looking at food costs and the poverty and the hunger that is going around globally. And in this respect, there has been an unbelievable financial rush to get involved in oil. Uh, fully 75 percent of indexing of commodities is directed towards oil. And that amounts to, in the United States alone, close to $350 billion of uh, buying money, money that goes in to buy oil and specifically uh, drives prices. We've seen, for example, uh, prices at the pumps 
but even uh, on the financial markets, oil go well above $110 in the WTI and, and almost $135 in the European benchmark, which is the Brent market, before coming down just a couple of weeks ago. But even coming down, people are saying we're getting some relief from these oil prices, and yet we're still hovering very close to $100 here in the United States and in Europe closer to $115. So oil is really one of the major catalysts along with what we talk about biofuels that has been charging the commodity trade in wheat, right. in corn, in rice, and other grains. All right. Well, a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting details there. I really do appreciate your time. Uh, that was Daniel